Wilcox. I say Wilcox. Good morning, Sir John. Ha! Good morning, indeed. Anything gone wrong, Sir John? Gone wrong? Young man, I was born right here in London. I've been living here at the Savoy Hotel for 15 years. Now, would you mind telling me since when it has become the custom for guests to roller skate up and down the hall at 3 o'clock in the morning? I'm most awfully sorry, Sir John. We don't know what to do with that Gracie Allen. A bit balmy, you know. We've taken away her bicycle. Oh, dear. Uh, are you there? Uh, room clerk speaking. Yes. Who? Miss Gracie Allen. Yes. Oh, you're leaving for America this afternoon. Very well. I'll send the boy right up to your luggage. Uh, thank you. Uh, Bell boy. Yes, sir. Uh, go up to Miss Allen's room, 320, and get her luggage. She's leaving for America. Oh, room clerk. Get one of the other bell boys to go up. Hey. Every time I walk to a room, she gets angry because I won't give her a tip. Oh, go on, boy, and hurry. Oh. She's really leaving for America? Mr. Sinelli. Yes. That girl with the skates. That, that Gracie Allen, she's leaving for America. Oh, oh, Miss Douglas. Yes? That Bonnie Gracie Allen is leaving for America. Oh, Cynthia, darling. Yes. That crazy Gracie Allen is leaving for America. Oh, I'm awfully no, glad. No, no. Don't say anything. She's just coming out of the lift now. <laughs> Gracie, Gracie, before we left home, I told you you were the silliest girl in America, but I want to apologize. Oh, you don't love us anymore. Mm, now that I've traveled all over Europe, I've changed my mind. You're not the silliest girl in America. You are the silliest girl in the whole world. Oh, Daddy, Daddy, I bet you tell that to all the girls. White House, the girls present... <laughs> Here, you pay the cabbie and I'll take care of the luggage. Porter, Porter, yes, sir. will you get those bags and follow me? Yes, sir. The cab fare will be three and sixpence, Miss. Uh, here's a twenty pound note. A twenty pound note, Miss. Haven't you got any small change? Oh yeah, here's some small change too. Oh, thank you, Miss. <laughs> thank you. Tracy, Tracy, come on. Oh, wait a minute, George. I just want to take one more look at my native land. Your native land. You were born and raised in America. Oh yeah, isn't America wonderful? They raised me and they raised corn and they raised wheat. And oh, hooray for America! There's something about the soldier. Come There's on, come about on, the follow the porter. Oh. Walk this way, miss. Gracie, why are you limping? Well, I've got a limp. The porter said walk this way, and this is the way the porter walks. Hippity hop, hippity hop. Oh, what's going to Gracie Allen? I'm the London Times. I like a statement. What do you think of the British Empire? Empire? Well, we don't know, mister. We haven't seen any of your baseball games. But Gracie, maybe Gracie, here. the man means empire, not umpire. Well, that isn't my fault if he has an impediment in his feet. Oh, you see, Miss Evans, we don't play baseball here in England. Our big game is cricket. Well, I'm certainly glad we didn't go big game hunting. Big game hunting? Well, imagine shooting a little cricket with a great big gun. Listen, the kind of cricket. Yeah, I know, I know. You don't even need a great big gun to shoot a cricket. You just lie in the thicket and you see a cricket and you're a cricket. Goodbye and good luck. Oh, tip, 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 and you said something when you said Dickie. Hey, hey. Gracie, it's a matter of days before you finish up in a nut factory. Oh, well, Judge, how much are they paying an hour now? Twenty cents. Oh. <laughs> They're not putting the automobile in the water. Oh, no? They're putting it on the boat. Somebody is taking their automobile to America. Well, that certainly is ridiculous. Ridiculous. Well, yeah, that certainly is ridiculous. Imagine trying to drive an automobile to America. Oh, you wouldn't catch me driving a car across the ocean. Unless I was sure the tires didn't leak. And then another Well, all right, don't worry about it. If you did drive an automobile across the ocean about every mile, you would probably find a service station. Oh, well, I'm not worried about that. What I'm worried about is there's no hot dog stand. Hot dog stand? Yeah, my dog Herman loves hot dogs. And I love my dog, Herman. And, George, if you love somebody and that somebody loves hot dogs, you'll drive farther for a hot dog than you would for a service station. Or would you? Gracie, your dog, Herman, is not with us. Oh, well, then let's take the boat. Yeah, let's take the boat. Sorry, madam, but you'll have to hurry because this boat goes to America in five minutes. Oh, now that's what I thought. He's a big boat like this going to America in five minutes. That's a Come on, come on, Gracie, there's the whistle. <laughs> well, all I can say is it's a pretty terrible whistle. I can't even tell what food is whistling. 
Lacey. It's whistling for passengers. Well, that's a funny way to get passengers. That is, they advertise in the newspapers like the other steamship line. Let them keep on whistling for passengers that day, and they'll finish up by selling peanuts. You said it. I said it. I didn't say anything. Well, then talk a little louder. I can hardly hear you. Come on, hurry up, hurry up, and run up the gangplank. <laughs> Oh, boy, well, we finally made it. Well, she looked, they're taking in the gangplank. I guess everybody is aboard. Oh, well, then I better tell the captain, huh? Hey, captain, all aboard! Quiet. All aboard! Quiet. Well, Gracie, now we're safe on board. Let me have my money back. What money? What money? I gave you 40 pounds to hold for me. Oh, yes. Well, I'm guessing the captain got it because he got 20 pounds. I've got 20 pounds left. 20 pounds? Yeah. Gracie, 20 pounds is $100. You gave the taxi driver $100. Yeah, and some change, too. Change, too. Gracie, while you're at it, why don't you throw the other hundred dollars overboard? Oh, well, George, I think it's a silly thing to do, but it's your money, so here goes. Whee! Some, someplace, there must be someone who could do something to stop the silly chatter that goes on for days and days and days. <laughs> Isn't this a perfect night to be walking around on deck? Oh, yes, George. A beautiful boat, a full moon, and the stars, and the calm of the ocean. Oh, oh, I could get romantic if I only had somebody to miss. And really, George, there's nobody in the world I'd rather miss than you. Thanks. It's little things like that that make me the happiest boy in the world. Oh, Georgie, will you do me a favor? Mm. As we're walking around the deck, will you take deep breaths for my daddy? Take deep breaths for your daddy? Yes, because the doctor said daddy needs the sea air. It'll do him a world of good, but he couldn't afford to take this this big trip, you know. Well, all right. If you'll just keep quiet, I'll take deep breaths for your daddy. But you'll have to walk slower. You know, daddy can't walk fast. But, Gracie, supposing I get seasick. Well, then you can do that for my brother. It'll do him a world of good. I hope so. Good evening. We're both headed for America. See you again next time round the deck. Yeah. <laughs> she's awfully silly. We're both headed for America, and she's walking in one direction, and we're walking in another. Gracie, <laughs> Gracie, I'm still taking deep breaths for your daddy. Oh, thanks, Pop. You're looking better already. Gracie, why don't you walk along the edge of the boat? You might get sleepy and drop off, I hope. Oh, a moonlight night and these compliments. If I didn't know you, I'd think you were a gigolo. Georgie, would you like to kiss my little hand, madame? A little later, yes. Oh, say, mister, mister, stop pushing that little poodle around on a wooden leaf. Gracie, that's a sailor. He's mopping the deck. That's not a poodle. Oh, I mean the poodle of water that he's pushing around. Oh, well. Good evening, sir. Hmm, kind of busy, eh, sailor? Ah, oui, monsieur. I will be working all night tonight. I will probably use up four or five mops. Say, sailor, I know a mop you won't use up. That's May West mop. May West mop? Yeah, why don't you come up and see me sometime? Come on, come on, Gracie. <laughs> oh, that said he was an old-fashioned sailor. He wore bell-bottom pants. Gracie, do, want... do me a favor and do very little talking. Here comes the captain of the ship. Oh, where? Oh, do I need him? Oh, I'm dying to meet him. You know, I heard somebody say today the captain was forward. And with a forward captain and a moonlight night, he might kiss my little hand, madame. Yes. Huh? Well, good evening, Mr. Byrne. Good evening, Miss Allen. Uh, good evening. Hello, Hello, Captain. You've certainly got a lovely boat. Oh, but yes. The Ile de France is a fine boat. Oh, oh look, the Ile de France have puppies. Puppies? They're hanging alongside of the rail. And their ears are sticking out. Oh, Gracie, oh. those are not puppies. Those are lifeboats. <laughs> those are not ears. They are all... There are 24 oars in every boat. Well, that's nothing. There's 24 oars in every day, and I'm not worrying about that either. Yeah, Gracie, <laughs> except in February, which has 28. <laughs> oh, that was very funny, George. Go ahead, Captain. Now it's your turn to talk. Uh, look, Captain, don't mind her. The moon has been beating down on her head for the last two hours. Oh? Uh, say, Captain, what is that way out there? A sailboat? No, 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 no. That is an iceberg. Hmm, look at how high the thing is rising. Oh, I heard that on the radio, the rise of the iceberg. Hey, Molly, how is Mrs. Glenn? Uh, quiet. Come on, Captain. Well, uh, Gra uh, come on, Gracie. You know, Captain, we'll see you later. No, 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 no. If you do not mind, I'd like to walk right along with you. I do not want to miss a word of this. Eight o'clock and all is well. Oh, God. Ha, ha. This big foolish talk. He says the eight o'clock and all is well. <laughs> no. <laughs> Miss Allen, he means all is well on the boat. Oh, Captain, he's wrong. All are well on the boat. All right, Gracie. All are well on the boat. All are not well on the boat. I don't feel so well. And nobody can tell me that fellow who eight o'clock feels good either. And, Captain, you look kind of sick yourself. <laughs> Gracie. Well, after that, I think we all need a little drink. Let us go into the bar. Some of the passengers are having a little entertainment. Oh, 
Palladium in London, and if you cook them, maybe they will sing a song. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Uh, say, boy, do you know Yankee Doodle Blues? Yeah. And boys, play the middle part loud, because that's where George always goes flat. Say, here's a word I want to say. I'm not as good as talking. <laughs> say, have you ever been away? Oh, sent the word Dallas. Have you ever missed the hero you were saying? When you get that itching in your shoes, you better try a cough drop. Go to any other land you choose and see how quickly the Yankees do the blues. I'm singing, there's no land as grand as my land from California to Manhattan Island. No, south, that sunny skyland. Oh, I love every mile of playing Yankee Doodle. That melody that keeps ringing in my ears. The Yankee Doodle, that's the melody makes you stand right up and cheer. I'm coming, USA. I'll say I love you. Make me who plays Yankee Doodle blue. They say that Europe is wonderful with all that ancient junk. Well, it's not as good as Kokomo, and Kokomo is the bunk. I couldn't see or run, and it was covered by a fog. I had to move from Paris, so I couldn't need a fog. From there, I went to Old Cologne and started on the round. But Old Cologne, the smell of sweet and pretty as it sounds. A Russian Bolshevik, he tried to get my sound. And then I had my welcome out the flight and on the out. Hello, Miss Liberty. I'll say you're a fan. And then the customer officer said to me, Why do you declare I am the Yankee Doodle? That melody keeps on ringing in my ears. Yankee Doodle. That's the melody makes you stand right up and chill homecoming. You were saying, I'll always say, 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 I'll always
Well, my trunk is locked, but if he can look through my trunk and see what's in it, he certainly ought to be able to guess my name. Listen. Oh, that's a good trick, mister. Uh, and if you can do it, then I'll show you the one with two decks of cards. Now, Gracie, why don't you do a trick where you stick your little blue hat in the neck of a bottle and don't take it off? Oh, well, that's one of my old tricks. Uh, miss, I'd like to see what you brought back from Europe. Well, oh, you don't have to bother. I didn't bring back anything for you. Huh? Can you imagine that, George? I never met that man in my life, and he thinks I brought him back a present from Europe. Gracie, the so, government uh, only allows you $100. Oh, well, then why doesn't he give it to me and let me go? Uh, look, miss, did you buy any gowns from Paris? Well, of course, several of them. May I see them, please? Oh, oh I know you'll love just one of them. It's a black lace with a low back, you know, sort of a dance frock. But oh, I wouldn't think of letting you see me in until I get my hair fixed. Did you get a mirror on? Well, see, the officer isn't interested in seeing how you look in the gowns. All he wants to see is the gowns. Oh, well, it doesn't take all kinds of people to make a world. Can you imagine a big man like that interested in gowns? Miss, did you bring back any perfume? See, what did I tell you, Judge? He even likes perfume. Well, see, there's a heavy duty on French perfumes, and if you brought any back, you'll have to pay a tax on it. Oh, well, in that case, I didn't bring any. Well, I'm mm-hmm. sorry to say, miss, but I smell Christmas night. What did he say, Judge? He said he smells Christmas night. Well, if I were in his place, I wouldn't brag about it. Gracie, Gracie. Uh-huh. I see you're wearing a mink coat. Miss, where does that mink come from? Where does that mink come from? Where does mink? Where does the plush coat come from? Where are the plushes? Officer, yes. we just located Miss Ellen's truck. We found it under the war. Under the what? War, war, war. Well, you don't have to bark at me. Just talk. I understand you. Why don't you say something to him, George? Well, you keep quiet. Oh, thanks, my hero. No, Miss Allen, if you just open your trunk, I'll get you out in no time. Oh, well, George, this fellow's even better than Houdini. You know, Houdini could only get you out of the trunk when you were in it. But this fellow says he'll open my trunk and get me out in no time, and I'm not even in it. Oh, am I? Gracie, will you shut your mouth and open your trunk? <laughs> All right, now, let's see. Where did I put the key? Oh, it isn't in my bag. It isn't in my pocket. Oh, I know where it is. But, George, you'll have to go and get it for oh, me. All right. Are you sure you know where yeah, it is? I know just where I put it. Well, Gracie, where did you leave it? Uh, in the left hand bureau drawer in that hotel in Paris. In right? Paris? Yeah. Somewhere, someplace, there must be someone who can do something to stop this silly chatter that goes on for the... <laughs> Wednesday at the same time, the makers of vintage White Owl cigars will bring you another adventure of Gracie with Bobby Dolan and his White Owl Orchestra and George Burns and Gracie Allen. And in the meantime, look for the vintage mark on the box. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.